Yugo Mauser M48. So we've got a military surplus Mauser here. This one is a Yugoslavia Model M48 Mauser. And if you look at this, you'll see that it looks a lot like a German Car 98. There's a few differences in there that we'll go over, but it looks very, very similar to it. So to go over the history of this a little bit, I'm going to jump very, very quickly into um, history of Yugoslavia. Now to say that the 20th century history of that region is a bit complicated is quite an understatement. We have the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. It was a bunch of different groups that were there that all formed together and we'll see that that's where they adopted their first Mauser type rifle which was the M24 and that Kingdom of Yugoslavia hung around for a while until World War II. This is where the Axis came in and took over Yugoslavia and when we say the Axis we mean largely Germany. So when Germany got in there and took it over, they broke it up into a bunch of separate little pieces in there that were all Nazi controlled. But basically by the end over it there, the allies had gotten the Axis powers out of there. And by the allies, in this case, I mean the Soviet Union. And when the Soviet Union got in there they did what the soviet union loved to do once they got into a country when they let loose of that country they made sure that they set up with a communist government so they could be a little communist state that would basically while not being part of the soviet union essentially be part of the Soviet Union. But then Yugoslavia decided that they kind of wanted to do their own thing. They didn't want to be so tied to the Soviet Union. They still wanted to be communist, which was the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. And it's right around here where this guy comes into the mix. And Yugoslavia kind of had this back and forth thing with the Soviet Union and they were like that until 1992 when the Soviet Union collapsed. At that point they became like this country of Serbia and Montenegro, but then Serbia and Montenegro split off into their separate things now and you just got Serbia that is left over from that. But anyway, back to 1948 where Yugoslavia is trying to do its own communist thing, not so tied to the Soviet Union, which is why you've got a communist country running something that was a gun that did not come from another communist country, namely this one coming out of Germany. They took their M24 rifle that they had and did updates on it based off of the German Car 98. And so to look at this, we can see some of the differences between this and the Car 98. The most obvious one being that we have a lot more wood up here than it does with the stock going all the way up here to the front and back behind this here. We have on the bolt handle right here, we have a machined off part on this here where it's not a complete spear there. We have that cut off instead of having a cut into the stock where the bolt handle would go. And while this bolt looks pretty much the same as a car 98 bolt. It's actually a little bit different length, so they're not quite interchangeable. And so this being a little bit length means that the stock is made a little bit differently. So most of the major components actually don't interchange with each other. Well, we'll get a good looking at all the markings on here. So we have this marking right here on the receiver. Now this translates to something meaning like Enterprise or Institute 44. So what is Enterprise or Institute 44? Well, that is actually just a code name for the uh, factory that was making it. This is the arsenal that ends up being known as Zastava, which is where you will see these often referred to as Zastava M48s. We have this little marking over here, a little proof mark, and this thing that looks like HPJ. 
that actually um, are the initials of the country in their own language that they use. And up here on the receiver, we have the emblem of Yugoslavia, which I really like it when there's like crests and cool little things like these on the rifles. From what I can tell of it, it's a flame that has six parts in it, which represent the six nations or peoples that make up Yugoslavia that all surrounded by wheat with um, on the top what would be a red star if this was full color and it has a date on it there of November 29 1943 so let's go ahead and take a look at everything else on this guy we have the standard Mauser flag safety if it's all the way over here and looking from the back the left position then it's actually in the position where it could fire if you were to pull the trigger. If it is in the top position there, this is useful for disassembly. It also means that you can work the bolt, but it will not fire. And if you put the flag all the way to the right position, not only will it not fire, but the bolt is actually locked into place and cannot move out. We've got sights up top here, which go from 200 yards or 200 meters to 2,000. Basically it working like this, where you can grab it and move it to the position that you want it to. It just kind of rides along, locks in place until you push these to move it. You can see it move up and down there. Also can be flipped over and is marked on the bottom there. So that if you're lying prone, you could set it to some position like 600 right there so that when you flip it over it's on 600 automatically there for you we have the serial number printed right here on the receiver you'll also see that the bolt is also serialized and you'll see that mine is not matching it has a cleaning rod on it there cleaning or clearing rod now the interesting thing with this cleaning rod is that you can see the threads in that it is entirely too short this is threaded here this is also threaded there so that two of these could go together this was meant to be used um, you know, in the military so you would have a buddy that you would be able to grab his and put them together and be able to use the two of them to clean it that way they could get one on there the front sight hood is removable here keeps that from getting banged around and for me I think it helps me I pick up the sight a little bit better having it there that front sight would be interchangeable with the car 98 also interchangeable with the car 98 is the sling we have the leather buckle here goes through that hole and then we have just a sling loop on the side of the barrel band there that that can go through this is a reproduction sling here. Now this is a cock on close action, which means that it cocks when the bolt is closed. One way to decock these is while it's up there, pull the trigger, push that down. And you'll see right here that that would have popped in. And if I pull this up here, this guy right there will pop right back out. Try to do this again, see if I can decock this without blocking that. There you go, and you see that go in there. And then as we open it here, once again, we'll watch that. And that will pop out again like so. One interesting thing on the bolt here is as you're using it, if you just bring it forward and try to push down on it, it won't go. It's, it's solidly locked there. And you'll see right here that there's just a little bit, just a little bit right there. Like right here, it won't go down, but just a tiny bit of force, and then that can go down. And really, with that tiny bit of force on it, it doesn't take a whole lot to bring it down. But if you aren't doing that, it won't ever go down. And sometimes when shooting it, I forget to, uh, in the middle of working the bolt... Remember to do that little bit of push forward on it there. Um, like I said, it's not much you have to do, but you do have to remember to do it. Now, another thing that Mausers are known for is the stripper clip. 
that is this little metal clip right here that the rounds can slide into. And the idea is that you've got a stripper clip guide right there that this can then sit into and then you could just push the rounds down into it that way. Now I'm not going to actually load one into the chamber here. Okay, I'm not doing that. But you can just push the top there, push it in. And then what I'll do, normally you would just push forward and close it. I'm going to push down on the top round so that the bolt slides over it. And I can see that there's not a round in there. Okay, so that's how you use a stripper clip. Which I'm going to show you another thing. Normally, if you wanted to get the rounds out of this, you would have to work the bolt to get them out of there. Which would bring um, rounds in and out of the chamber, which... Um, indoors may not always be the best idea so how can you unload it without doing that what you do is you push down on that then you push this base plate back towards the back of the rifle that'll pop up and the whole magazine spring comes out there and then you can just dump out rounds like that if you wanted to big milled metal follower on it um, that is one thing that the M48 has um, on the original M48 is that all of the pieces on it are nice milled pieces. This floor plate is milled, the follower is milled, the trigger guard is milled. All of this stuff is milled and you would see it usually end up being stamped at some point. Um, all of the German stuff started off milled and eventually started getting stamped. Um, and that's kind of what ended up happening that the later iterations you'll see like M48A, M48B, um, they start replacing a lot of the other components with stamped parts. And speaking of the round, this is 8mm Mauser. Now just to compare it to you here, here's 8mm Mauser and here's a 30 6 You can see the case is a little bit smaller on the... The case is a little bit shorter on the 8mm Mauser versus 30-06, um, but the um, 8mm Mauser has a bigger projectile, a bigger bullet to it, not only in length, but in overall size because it is just a slightly larger bore. We can see here with the barrel that eight millimeter when we push it in there it just kind of stops about right there which is kind of where you would want to see it go um, versus the 30-06 which it just completely swallows up because um, it's a little bit smaller so we're going to go ahead and get this guy out to the range and we're going to uh, see if we can um, hit some steel targets with this
and you can see I could have varying levels of success with it there up to 400. I was doing pretty decently hitting the plates. To me, it seems like it shoots a little bit high, but that may just be um, how I like to hold it. And as for my final thoughts and opinions on this, I really like this thing. I think this shoots really great. They have not caught on quite as much as a lot of the other Mausers, I'm particularly like the um, the German Car 98s. All the German World War II stuff is just like crazy expensive. This is a lot more affordable, although it is starting to go up a bit. Um, they are um, more expensive now than they were five or ten years ago. But really, they shoot very well. You could use this. Um, very easily for hunting or for just going out and shooting uh, you know targets like I was and it's actually the military surplus and got um, an interesting history to it so I think it's um, a pretty nice rifle to have. Well, if you found this video useful be sure to give it a thumbs up and a like. You can go down into the comment section and leave any thoughts you have down there and if you're interested you can also subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification to make sure that you catch all the videos that I post so you don't miss anything. I'm Jeremy with Poindexter G and we'll see you next time.